Was it snowing in that video too? I didn't even notice. We've got to check out that roof and figure that out at some point. Uh, good morning, everybody. How are we all doing today? Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Encounter. It is great to welcome you uh, with us this morning um, as we worship Jesus together and during this Advent season. Uh, if you are a first or second time guest with us this morning, welcome. Uh, we're super glad you're here. Um, I would encourage you to stop by our welcome center on the way out the doors. Um, out there and to the right, there are people that would love to um, greet you, uh, answer any questions that you might have about Encounter. If you're worshiping with us for the first time online this morning, um, it's great to be with you as well. And for everyone that's worshiping online, we're, we're so happy um, that we can still worship together um, in this way. Uh, out in the lobby at the Welcome Center, there is a Connect card. Looks like this. Uh, you can use that to submit your contact information so you can be in touch with the church. If that was something you'd like to receive, our weekly correspondences, whatever it may be, you can use that for prayer requests, um, everything of that nature as well. Um, you can also do that via our church app. Um, you can do everything via our church app. Um, you can connect in that way. You can share um, your tithes and offerings through the giving tab. You can check out upcoming events, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd encourage you to um, download that if you don't have it yet. It's a great tool, especially in this time where we're all kind of like disparate, um, either at home, here, whatever it may be. Um, it's a great way to be able to kind of stay connected and up to date with what is happening in the life of our church. Um, as for offering, if you are worshiping with us this morning, um, out these back double doors here, there's two offering boxes. If you came prepared to give this morning, um, that is where you would do that um, as you go out at the end of the service. Uh, if you're worshiping from home, I mentioned this already, there's a give tab on the app and on the website. Um, and there are other ways that you can give, as you can see on the screen, um, you can do all of that um, digitally. So uh, we appreciate the continued faithfulness uh, throughout this season. Um, Speaking of, we also are taking a Christmas offering throughout the month of December. Um, this is a special offering that we set aside, 100% of it, to go directly to um, a certain cause or a certain uh, whatever it may be. This year, we are um, allocating those funds to a uh, couple of our different missions partners. Um, the Caring Cupboard, who is local and helps with people with food insecurity, uh, which is especially significant during the season. If you're not familiar with what the Caring Cupboard does in the community, um, they do amazing work year-round, so we are blessed to be able to support them more this year with that. We also partner with uh, a family called the Bundys um, in Spain, and they oversee a number of different churches in Spain um, who have hit, been hit especially hard um, since the pandemic. And so we are blessed to be able to, to share um, some of this Christmas offering this year with them as well. Um, if you are giving online... Um, there is a special tab that says Christmas offering, and you can designate and allocate it towards that. 
Uh, if you are with us here in the sanctuary, you'll notice there are little blue envelopes um, at your chairs. Uh, you can use those um, to put into the Christmas offering. If you use a regular envelope, just designate right Christmas offering on it if you would like it to go to that. And you guys are up in the really cool, awesome stadium seating hanging out. Um, yeah. Was that Tom with the rock fist? What's up, Tom? Uh, <laughs> didn't expect that. Um, there, I think in the pouches in front of you, uh, there are uh, envelopes as well. So that's where those would be for y'all up there. Um, all right, and uh, with that, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer as we continue on in worship, if y'all would mind bowing your heads with me. Jesus, as we uh, come together in this season, um, it's a season of, of joy and celebration and hope. Uh, it's also a season of heaviness, uh, especially this year. Um, but we um, celebrate that we can gather around uh, you, Jesus. Um, every Sunday, we can kind of establish this rhythm of coming together in worship of you and centering ourselves on that. And I pray that that would happen for us this morning, that amidst of wherever we're coming from, whatever we're working through, um, Jesus, that we would be able to set aside this time as worship of you, um, that we would behold your glory and we would be um, met by your spirit. Um, and that everything that happens today would uh, be to your glory, Jesus. You are worth that, um, especially today, especially right now. Um, you are worth our praise, and you are worth all the glory that we can ascribe to you. So uh, we pray that that would be the upshot of what we do this morning. We thank you so much for your faithfulness in our lives and everything that you've given us. It's your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We read in John chapter 1, the Word, which is Jesus, gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. We continue this morning with the lighting of our Advent candles. We started last week, we lit candle number one. Well, we're hoping to. There we go. Representing hope. This morning we light the second candle, which represents preparation. The fact that we are in a time of waiting, waiting to celebrate and prepare ourselves for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. So we read these words from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. Listen. It's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves, smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it. For the Lord has spoken. Father God, we thank you for this Advent season, this time of waiting, and especially this morning, God, we, we recognize that you are the answer to what we are preparing. I pray, God, that during these days and weeks of Advent, that our hearts will be turned to you on a daily basis in anticipation of the celebration of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
feel the world is broken We do Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do Okay. 
great morning we've already enjoyed as we've given praise and worship to the God who deserves it all. I'm Terry, one of the pastors on staff here at Encounter, and it's so good to have each and every one of you here and online to be able to celebrate during this Christmas season and during this time of Advent just before we begin, I just want to make a, a brief announcement. One of our former pastors of Encounter Church back in the late 80s and early 90s, Reverend Marlon Zook, passed away this past Friday at the age of 84. He had a great career for 23 years of his ministry. He was a missionary to Japan and had an incredible impact. Uh, it was hard, but God definitely used him and his wife, Ruth, uh, and 23 years there. My first recollection of Marlon was when we attended a conference together. Uh, it was also in the late 80s. There were several of us pastors from the Brethren in Christ Church that were at this conference, and at the end of one of the evening sessions, he asked several of us if we would like to go out with him for some sushi. Well, that was a long time ago, and sushi did not sound very good to me, I can just tell you. Now, I was a lot younger then. I didn't realize just how good it could be. And he said, well, you've probably never had the real thing. So he said, I know of a place here. What, will you come with me? And so we did. And it was amazing. And ever since then, I've not found quite as good as what he shared with us that night. Uh, but I have acquired a taste for that. So that was my earliest recollection of Marlon. Then, of course, he was pastor here at Encounter Church when we were in the old building. Uh, he's been retired for a while, but still very actively involved in a healing prayer ministry. And so he was just a real dear man of God. His wife, uh, Ruth, is still alive. They've been married 61 years. And so I'm just going to have a brief word of prayer for her, for their family, uh, and just for the, uh, the ministry uh, that Marlon had over his years. So will you join me in a word of prayer? Father God, we do thank you 
for Marlon this morning. We thank you for a life well lived. Thank you, God, for the way you were able to use him and his choosing to allow that uh, in all the years of his ministry. I pray for Ruth and I pray for their children uh, during this time of loss. And I thank you, God, that while we grieve, uh, it's with the hope uh, that we will see him again. And so, God, I ask for your blessing and comfort to be upon the family, the extended friends. Um, there's always such a feeling of loss when this happens. And we thank you, God, that you are the one who was victorious over death. And so we pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Well, as you can see, we're in part two of our Christmas teaching series, Unwrapping the names of Jesus. And so you'll see a lot of our graphics. You'll see the wrapped gifts on both the corners of the stage. Uh, we're putting the little tags on there for the themes of each morning. And so here was our first week, and that's Jesus. And this week, of course, I'm going to be talking about the Lion of Judah. Now, the video that led into our message this morning, was it not a picture of strength? It was a picture of incredible power. Uh, the roaring lion. It's an, it's an incredible picture. A lion, perhaps more than any other image, gives us, does it not, this feeling of strength, of power, of, of courage, of being almost invincible. It was about four years ago now at Christmas, uh, we were still meeting in the lobby uh, for our auditorium. Uh, we did a teaching series using a curriculum based on the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Some of you may remember it by C.S. Lewis. In this book, Lewis used a fantasy tale as a way of retelling the story of God's redemption of all humanity through the person of Jesus Christ. And so when he wrote his fantasy novel, he had to decide what kind of character was going to be the hero of the story. And of course, he could have chosen anything. It could have been some fanciful thing. It, uh, but who was he going to choose? Or what was he going to choose? And after thinking about it for a while, C.S. Lewis chose as his hero the one that would represent the person of Jesus Christ in all the Chronicles of Narnia. He chose a lion. Lions give us this idea of power, of strength, and of courage. We think of something majestic, do we not? Something kingly. We call it the lion, the king of the jungle. And so he chose a lion to represent Jesus. Now, he didn't just make that up. I mean, he got that imagery from the Bible. In fact, God is spoken of as a lion many times in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. There's a verse of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5, that gives us this incredible picture just before this. This is a scene that John the Seer is writing, and, and he's in heaven. And the elders who are up there are seeing people, and they are weeping, and they are sorrowful. And it's in seeing that, that they say these words. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. And it goes on to say, just like what we sung this morning, that in fact, because of who he is, the lion of Judah, he is worthy of opening the scrolls. Again, this sense of power, a sense of strength. I know there's many times that when we think of the person of Jesus, we'll often think of Jesus as being meek and mild, someone who exuded love and compassion, and that's definitely a part of who Jesus is. But we do need to see the whole picture, and we're going to do that this morning, because the Bible says Jesus was fully God and fully man, and so being fully God, it meant that Jesus had this incredible love and compassion for everyone, for you and for me. But because he was fully God, it also meant that he had incredible strength. He had God's power. I love in the movie, C.S. Lewis describes Aslan the lion the hero of the Chronicles of Narnia representing Jesus in very colorful ways. The one that I remember the most is when there's the four children, and they're also heroes in this story. And in fact, I would encourage you, if you've never watched The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, to do that. Uh, it's an awesome one. Now, it's intense, but it's an incredible story of the redemption of humankind. 
But in this story, these four children meet a beaver. Now, there's a lot of animated animals in the movie, and they speak, and they talk, and they were talking to this friendly beaver, and his name was Mr. Beaver. He didn't get very creative with that one. And they asked him about Aslan, and they said, Mr. Beaver, is, is he safe? Is it safe for us to be around Aslan the lion? To which Mr. Beaver responded, safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he is good. He's the king. And friends, it's the same with Jesus. He isn't safe. I would say to you this morning that meeting Jesus is in fact dangerous. It will turn your life upside down. But as Mr. Bieber would say, in a really good way. So this morning, that's what I want to share with you, the, the power side, the strength side of Jesus. Because if there was ever a time in our lives and in our country, in our church, where we need his strength and his power, his courage to make it through, it is now. So maybe to put it in the form of a question, if in fact that's who Jesus is, he is strong and he's powerful and he's courageous, he's like a lion. If that actually represents his character, then why should I have him in my life? Would it make a difference? Well, look at our theme verse for this morning. It's found in Ephesians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul wrote these words. He said, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. And then look at these words. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. So I think it's important for us to understand this morning as we begin that this verse tells us that when we invite God into our lives and we begin a relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, the same power that raised him from the dead is available to you and to me. That power, strength, courage, is made available. It means there's no reason for us to go through our lives feeling dejected, feeling defeated, feeling doubtful, feeling anxious. It means we can come out the other side victorious. How does it work? How do we access that kind of power made available to us as a follower of Jesus? Well, let me ask you first this morning. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel like you're just, it's, it's out of your control? You, you cannot handle what you're going through. By yourself, you're just not going to make it. Maybe you're here this morning and you're feeling helpless, powerless with what's going on around you. Maybe you're feeling that life's coming down on you. It's dealing you more than you can handle. Maybe for some of you this morning, you're feeling depressed. Kind of hard not to these days, isn't it? <laughs> it's rough. Is COVID ever going to end? Maybe you're here and you're a single mom or a single dad and working one, maybe even two jobs, and you're raising your children just feels like it's too much. Maybe you're trying to keep your marriage together. Maybe your situation is at the end of every month. What's going out is more than what's coming in. Maybe there's sickness in your family. Maybe you, one of your children are sick. Just don't know what to do. Maybe you're wondering 
Are you strong enough? Am I strong enough to get through what I'm facing right now? Well, the Bible tells us in no uncertain terms that the answer to that question is no. By yourself, by myself, we are not able to get through much of what happens to us in the life in which we live. But I am here to say to you this morning that when you begin a relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, when you begin following him, then the Bible is very clear that the very power of God that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you. The power of the Lion of Judah is available to you and to me. Now, does it mean that we just don't go through? We go through just as much, maybe more. But we're not alone. We know that no matter what's coming, no matter what's happening, past, present, and future, there is a power that will be victorious. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah puts it this way. He, and he's talking about God, said, He gives power to the weak. He gives strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall into exhaustion. That's just life. He said, but those who trust in the Lord, will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and they won't get weary. They will walk and they will not faint. What a promise. Did you notice in the verses, you're looking at it, who does he give this power to? Who does God give this strength to? Those who are self-sufficient and feel like they've got it all together? Not really. He says he gives power to those of us who are weary. He gives strength to those of us who are tired, to those of us who are worn out, to those of us who are exhausted, to those of us who find ourselves in that position, feeling that down. God says, trust in me, rely on me, wait on me. And his promise is clear. When we do that, when we place our trust in him, our strength is renewed. We start to soar. We can feel the difference inside. We can continue the race. We can complete it to the end. I know that for some of you, there's only one reason that you're here today. You are feeling overwhelmed. And you came just hoping that maybe you'd find an answer, a solution for your situation. I'm glad you're here because God's promise is that anyone who places their trust in him, he will give strength and he will give power. And you can be victorious with his strength. Not your own, but his. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 puts it this way. For I can do everything through Christ, for he's the one who gives me strength. See, that really is the key. That's the key to tapping into God's power. And we have to do it on an ongoing basis. It's not once and done. It's each and every day connecting with God. Spending time with God. And we begin to be infused with who He is, the Lion of Judah, the strength and the power. In the Chronicles of Narnia, at the end of the story, it looks like Aslan the Lion is going to be victorious, like he's going to defeat the evil witch. But just when it seems victory is his, the witch has one more trick up her sleeve. One of the children, Edmund, has been tricked by the witch in order to betray the other children. And so the witch looks at Aslan and asks him, have you forgotten the ancient magic, the ancient law that says that when someone sins like this and this kind of a betrayal, that they now belong to the dark side. They now belong to the witch and the witch can do whatever she wants and she wants to kill him. 
So they have to turn Edmund over to the witch. And she's about to kill him. But at that moment, Aslan speaks. And he asks the witch, have you forgotten the even deeper? The even more ancient law, the law that says, if there is one who is without blemish, if there is one who is perfect, who is without sin, if that one decides to step forward in the place of the one who is flawed and the one who has sinned, then that one can take their place. And the one who has sinned will have their life redeemed and renewed and they get a second chance. So Aslan the lion takes Edmund's place, submits himself to the witch and says, you can now do what you wish. And she kills him. She kills Aslan. And you saw part of how that ended. Because death is no match for Aslan. He's able to overcome the circumstances. And I would say to you this morning that for us in our life, Jesus is also more powerful than death. Now remember, the Chronicles of Narnia, it's a biblical story of human redemption. It's retold as a fantasy tale by C.S. Lewis. But you and I both know that our life is not a fantasy. Our life is real. And our life is serious. And our life can be incredibly difficult. You see, like Edmund, you and I have also been tricked. We're told over and over again, are we not? Well, God doesn't exist. Jesus really doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter what you believe, how you act, how you live your life. In fact, it's better just to turn your back on this God thing because then you can really enjoy your life. But friends, understand that there is an ancient law that says when we believe those lies, and if we choose to turn our backs on God, when we sin and fall short of what God has done for us, the ancient law says that you and I are turned over to the dark side, and we are separated from God. In this life, if we believe those lies, we are separated from God and we will not experience his redeeming power. But it goes further than that because it's not only this life, we will spend eternity separated from God. But here's the good news. The Bible tells us that there's an even greater and more ancient law that says, if there is one who is without sin, if there is one who is fully God and fully man who willingly will take our place and give up his life for all of us who have sinned and take on the punishment of death for us, then our lives can be redeemed. They can be made new. We can plug into God's power and we can live forever in eternity with God in the place that he is preparing for you and for me. And we know that man as Jesus Christ. This is how the writer of Colossians puts it in chapter 2. He says, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature wasn't yet cut away. But then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all of our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. see, it was Jesus' sacrifice on the cross that secured our salvation. It was that power that rescued us from death. It was that power that rescued us from a life where we couldn't handle what we're dealing with. What do you and I have to do to receive it? Simply believe what the Bible tells us about Jesus. Believe that Jesus Christ died for 
your sins, for my sins. Then we accept that free gift, the gift of salvation. Understand this morning there's a choice to be made. You are the only one who can make that choice. The choice to believe. The choice to receive Jesus Christ into our hearts. The choice to be able to live in his power. The very lion of Judah, Jesus Christ himself, wants to make his home in your heart. So this morning I want to leave you with a couple of challenges. The first one is this, that you just trust that Jesus is powerful enough to handle and you fill in the blank. Whatever it is that you may be going through today, tomorrow, trust that God's already got your back on it. He will bring victory. But you need to have a relationship with him. And so that's my second challenge. If you have never made that decision for Jesus to be in your heart, in your life, to be your Savior, to be your Lord, to the one who leads and guides you, but I would say that there's no better time than a season of Advent when we celebrate the birth of our King, that you invite him into your heart and into your life. So we started this morning with a verse from Revelation chapter 5 tells us how human history is going to end. Gives us the end of the story. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus, the heir to David's throne, he's won the victory. It's already yours and it's already mine. just have to receive it. Will you pray with me, please? Father God, we thank you for Jesus, the Lion of Judah. We thank you that all the very power of heaven itself is available to each one of us this morning. To allow us to be able to take one day at a time. That's the promise, Jesus, that you gave to every one of us, just one day at a time. Spend time with you. Listen to the songs that we've been singing, the songs of victory. God, may they permeate our hearts and our minds that whatever we're going through, that we'll feel your presence with us. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price for our sin, that we can know you in a personal way. Thank you that because of your victory over death, we have the same power to be victorious in our lives. And God, I pray for those this morning who are still undecided about whether they want to follow you or not. Holy Spirit, I pray that you continue to speak to them in their hearts. Speak to them in ways that they will know that it's you. God, we choose this day to believe in the Lion of Judah, in whose strong name we pray. Amen. I heard that sermon this morning, and I thought to myself, you know, this is the challenge before me almost every week of my life, which is to make a choice between the world's definition of power and the world's definition of hope and success and peace and the one that the kingdom offers me. And what does it require to live in that peace that Terry just talked about and that strength is faith because it's so different and drastically different than what the world tells us and offers us. And I think we're just so tempted to rely on that strength and power and it looks so different in his kingdom. Where it's the sing this together. Bye.
every chain will break His broken hearts declare His parade and who can stop the Lord draw your attention really quick to the video on the screen and then we're gonna continue hey church family it's the most wonderful time of the year and with that being said we're going to be having our angel tree and palmyra area school district gift drive wrap up next sunday december 13th we still have a couple tags that are still available and if you are at all interested we ask that you stop by the lobby after service to pick up a tag or if you're watching from home, we ask that you email Pastor Ryan at ryan at encounterchurchofpalmyra.org and we will send you all the information. We really appreciate and are so thankful for your willingness to give to those who are in need this Christmas season with a special gift. Another quick reminder is that we will be having Christmas Eve services, one at three o'clock, which is our mass required service, 4.30 and six o'clock, which is our mask recommended services. We have an online recorded service that will be playing all day Christmas Eve. So you and your family can watch with us in spirit. We love you. We cannot wait to see you. Have a joyous Christmas.
I am not going to match that energy. So just yeah, Angel Tree Table is right out here. Thank you guys for continuing to participate in that. Um, just echo Terry's challenges as we go out this morning. Trust in Jesus' strength, specifically Jesus' strength for dot, 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 for whatever it is you're facing right now. Um, and it, that's for all of us. And maybe there, for some of us, you know, we need to be challenged to really receive and really be receptive to the first time for, uh, for the first time to the love of Jesus and his presence in our life. So I pray that that would be laid upon your heart as well. Um, prayer team will be to my banner, will be to my left at this banner. If you would like prayer as you go out today, God bless you all. Be safe, be well, be joyful. See you.